How can going on a walk outside teach your child hundreds of new words? In this video, I've written down lots of ideas for you about different words that your child can learn as you go on a walk outside on a regular Tuesday afternoon. Zooming out, big picture, the words that we speak out loud to our child are the words that are sinking into their brain and they're starting to use to think. And eventually, once those words have processed and they understand what words connect with what objects that they're seeing, the goal is that they'll be able to speak those words back to you and have conversations with you. This is why it's so important to talk with our kids. We don't have to talk with them 100% of the day for them to learn words. In fact, it's good to balance out silence with talking. But when you do talk to them, here's some ways that you can be intentional. As a pediatric speech language pathologist with my master's degree in communication disorders and as a mama, I share strategies to help children communicate that are rooted in research by demonstrating activities that work in our real day-to-day -day lives with our real kids on an ordinary Tuesday afternoon at home. I believe that your thoughts matter and your child's thoughts matter. So an easy way to remember to do this is think about the five senses. So start with sight. What are you seeing? So you might be seeing trees, grass, cars, neighbors, you can wave to them, mailboxes, flowers, grass, fences, cracks in the sidewalk. Also think about what's on their eye level. What are they noticing? What are they already looking at? And talk about that. If they're looking at some mulch, say mulch, I see mulch. If you live in the city, you might have different sites like restaurants. You might see lots of cars and trucks, stoplights, you might see power lines, you might see short buildings, tall buildings, lots of different color buildings, lots of different colors on the buildings and on the signs. We've talked about our sense of sight, now let's talk about our sense of sound and hearing. So you might hear birds, you might listen, and what do you notice? You might hear some birds, you might hear the wind blowing through the trees, you might hear cars zooming by, and in the city you have non-stop sounds like sirens, ambulance, maybe a fire truck, you might be hearing different languages spoken around you. Airplanes flying overhead. This is a sign for airplane, by the way. <laughs> My son loves airplanes and he's learned this sign for airplane and he signs it like this. Um, but I also teach a sign language class for beginners. So if you're interested in learning sign language, I'll link that class below so you can learn more. You might hear some construction noises like hammering or booms or a bulldozer digging up dirt. Those types of noises that aren't actually words are great to introduce to your child because they're early developing sounds that your child may be more likely to imitate than a whole word. So for example, airplane, my son could imitate that before he could say the word plane. So if you hear construction noises like tap, 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 or boom, those are more early developing exclamatory kind of sounds that are more novel. You might say them a little bit louder and with more intensity. And so your child might tune into that more and be more likely to imitate and copy what you say. Now the goal here isn't to get them to say boom, say, say it. That's not the goal. The goal is just for you to be pouring language into their brain. And if they choose to copy or imitate you, that's great, but that's not the goal of this activity. It's just to expose them to a vast variety of vocabulary words and sounds so they can be soaking them in and attaching meaning to the world around them. So I'd like to discourage you from saying, repeat after me or say boom or say car. Right now we're just exposing them to a ton of different words. So we've talked about sight, sound, let's talk about smell. So you might smell freshly cut grass, you might stop and smell a flower. Someone might be grilling out, I love that smell. In the winter, you might notice that kind of fireplace smell, that warm, cozy smell when you're outside. I love that smell too. If you're in the city, you might be smelling restaurant smells or like that sweet smell of the ice cream shop as you walk by and the doors open. The next sense is touch. So there's lots of things to touch when you're outside like grass, rocks, pebbles, sticks, leaves, dirt. And in the stroller, there's the sense of touch when you go over bumps and you can say, oh, bump, bump, before you go over a bump. In the city, there's different surfaces on buildings that are textured. So you might have glass or brick. So you can introduce tactile words like smooth or bumpy, rough. The last sense is taste. So if you bring a snack with you, you can talk about how your snack tastes salty or sweet, or you can use words to describe the snack like crunchy or smooth, cold or warm. And you could also bring a bag with you 
and kind of make it a nature walk where you collect things. So you could collect leaves, for example, or little bits of grass or pine cones or little pebbles. And as you're adding items to the bag, like leaves, for example, you can use the strategy of repetition to say leaf, 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 leaf. The more we hear words repeated, the easier it is to learn that word because repetition is how we all learn new words. This page shares all of the different speech therapy strategies that I use, and I've attached each strategy to an icon so they're easy to remember. This is a free download on my website, so you can grab that at learnwithadrian.com. I'll provide the direct link to it in the description of this video. And if you're at a park or if you're near your home and your own property, you could take pieces of grass and put them in the bag and you could say grass, grass. And I actually made a whole video about using one item like grass to surround it with hundreds of words. So while you're on a walk, you can be talking about lots and lots of words, but also if you just have one item in front of you, like grass, you can put that in the middle here and then you can surround that with words by using the question prompts that I have for you. This is also free on my website, my gift to you. So I recommend watching the video about grass next for even more in-depth ideas on how to zoom into one item and surround that with words and vocabulary. So as you're putting leaves in the bag or grass, you can add different words around that experience. So you could say red leaf, green leaf, brown leaf, this leaf has holes in it. Something was munching on it. Maybe an insect or a bug was eating it. You can collect rocks or sticks or mail from your mailbox. And then when you get home, you can take everything out of the bag and use repetition again. So leaf, leaf, stick, just label everything as it comes out. Just label it verbally so that they can be hearing the word that you're saying and looking at the object. They're feeling the object with their own hands and they're starting to connect those words together and giving objects around them meaning. If you're in the city, you could still pick up leaves or just little pebbles. You could maybe grab a take-home menu and create a craft at home. Your crafts don't have to be fancy. You could just cut out different words from a menu or pictures of food items and glue them on a piece of paper. You can maybe even stop into a store and say, oh, look at these fruits. Do you want an apple or a banana as a snack? And that would be using the strategy of choices. So you're giving them a choice of two items where they're hearing both words and they are more likely to imitate a word right after they've heard it and right after they see the object that you're talking about. Then I'd encourage you to be mindful and really focus in on what they are able to say. If they're able to say one word, then I bump it up to two words that you're using to talk to them. So if they can point and say plane, you can say, yeah, planes flying. If they're using two word phrases mainly, then I would talk to them in three word phrases, just kind of bump it up a level above what they're doing so that they're hearing you model a three word phrase. And if they're using three word phrases mainly, you can bump it up to four or five word phrases or sentences. Now, as I'm sharing all this, don't feel like you have to do this every single time you go on a walk. Don't feel like you have to do this for 100% of the time that you're on a walk. You don't need to be constantly talking to your child because a balance of talking and silence to process those words that they're hearing is important. So the goal is two-way communication. So looking at your child, seeing what they're noticing and commenting on it saying out loud what they're seeing so that they can learn to attach meaning to things that they're experiencing in their life. And then sometimes as a parent, you're just like, okay, let's get in the stroller and go on a walk. I need to just kind of regroup for a second in silence. You don't need to talk to them the whole time every time you're going on a walk with them. But when you do want to have moments of connection with them, the things that I share in this video are just another tool in your tool belt for doing that. I love reading your comments, so let me know. Do you normally go on walks in the city, in the suburbs, in a neighborhood, at a park? or in a more rural area. This video is part of a playlist of lots of other videos where I share speech therapy strategies that I use as a speech therapist and then also as a mama with my son. What we learn changes what we do and you just learned something new. And as always, you know your child best. So if you do have concerns that your child is falling behind on language milestones based on the norms that I share in my free printable download. And if you're looking for more guidance to help your child learn to talk, you're always invited to check out my online class where I teach the exact steps that I use in my speech therapy sessions to get children from saying very few words or no words at all to talking in sentences and having conversations with you. And if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, I share lots of videos like this and others where I teach exactly how I read books to toddlers or young children to teach them new vocabulary, as well as speech therapy strategies that I use 
with my own son to help him learn new words and learn how to communicate back and forth, how to increase eye contact, attention span, cognition, so many things. Look around on my YouTube channel and you should find something that will help you connect with your child on a deeper level. Thanks for subscribing, for liking this video, and for sharing it with your best friend. Remember to grab the free download at the link in the description of my video, and I'll see you in the next video.